gave you that fourth quarter specifically. Um, lots of ups and downs, and that's the calls. But those free throws at the end for Kevin, they've been an issue as a play as a team. So what, what did it mean to see him knock those down in that tight situation? Uh, I mean, he's Kevin Love. Uh, and there was no doubt in our mind that when he was going to the free throw line, he was going to make them both. Um, you know, there's no situation that he hasn't seen. Um, you know, there's no pressure filled moment that he hasn't been in. And so when he walked up there, he'd been there before. Uh, and he knocked him down. Um, and for you to challenge that call there at the end, uh, what did you see that led to wanting to challenge? It? He was way outside the restricted, and it was a terrible call. That's it. And then as the game went on, I guess, you know, started off the game, didn't have a ton of rhythm, but how did you see the guys sort of just find a way through it um, and sort of develop that? I think it was it was our defense. You know, you hold a team that, that's this good offensively to 15 and 19 points in the second and third quarter. Um, you know, our defense got us going, and you know, that was able to trigger our offense. Uh, once you're able to get stops and get out in transition, you know, we were able to create some easy ones. Uh, I thought Kevin was phenomenal, obviously, offensively. Um, but I think, you know, the true story of this was Jared Allen. Um, right from the beginning of the game, he came out with obviously a clear message for the league. Um, you know, that's an all-star performance. Uh, when we needed it most, being down bodies, uh, being able to set the tone and dominate a game, and he dominated the game. That's where I was going next, but I guess just building off of that, um, he does a really good job of, you know, also like just finding those opportunities, um, but not in some not hogging it, I guess. So how do you see him knowing like, when to take those opportunities, find his shots, find his way to the rim, um, that's not like overpowering, I guess? I mean, he's, he is you know, able to dominate a game through effort and heart alone. Um, you know, throw the skill in there, obviously the ability to finish, the footwork and all those things. Um, but, you know, you can't tame his heart uh, and you can't put a value on it. And, you know, we know it internally how important he is to us and how good of a player that he is. Um, but again, he came out with a message to send tonight. Uh, and I think he sent it loud and clear. Did he say anything um, to you guys, I guess, halftime, post-game? Uh, right? His action spoke louder. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Did you challenge him, Coach? We had a conversation. Yeah, he, he mentioned that to me just now. That's, that's, yeah. Do you think that had an impact? I mean, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. No, but like, you know, you know, Jared all year long has had a huge impact on what we've done, right? Jared's effort and heart is Jared's style of leadership. Um, you know, with the injuries that we have right now, right? Like, we need Jared to carry us with his leadership style. Uh, and that's what tonight is, and that's what he's capable of. Um, you know, I think that's what we all know, right? And so those are the conversations that we had. For a good win to come in, you know, as what the second start as one guard, um, what type of progress has he shown to you? Like, the type of faith that you have in him to be able to play in Well, it's the confidence that he's playing with. Um, you know, we need to find ways to score. You know, obviously when you're missing – you know, 36, 37 points out there. Uh, we got to find ways to manufacture baskets. And, you know, you're going to play. You got to be aggressive. And I thought he did that tonight. I thought he took his shots uh, when they were available. I thought he was putting pressure on the paint. You know, obviously he had nine assists, so he was facilitating, uh, making shots and creating shots for his teammates as well. Um, but, you know, you got to be aggressive. Uh, and I thought he was very aggressive tonight. And chatting before the game, we talked about, like, just getting back to who you are. And you mentioned, you know, playing that ugly you know, style of game. And how do you feel like you got back on that track with tonight's question? I mean, it was a game that needed to be ugly and it needed to be played in the trenches. Um, you know, this couldn't be a game that was played at their tempo. Uh, and, you know, I thought we did a great job of controlling tempo. Um, you know, the fourth quarter, you know, things were happening, but I thought we did you know, a good job of controlling what we could control. Uh, there were some uncontrollables out there, but – you know, I thought we did a great job of controlling the things that we could control, um, you know, and bringing the game to the mud. Those uncontrollables led to a ton of momentum and energy in that building. Um, that I'm sure I could feel it. You guys are feeling it a lot more. How did, how did you guys overcome all of that energy and momentum that they were able to build up that? Uh, just staying together. Um, you know, and 
for this team, you think back, like we found ourselves in our identity in adverse situations, you know, going on the road early, uh, going on that second long road trip that we went on and the success we had uh, in all those, you know, adverse environments. So this is something that doesn't shake our guys. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I heard a lot of Cavs fans out there too. Marla. Marla right now, our Akron Beacon Journal. Yeah, JB, what did the officials say about that three-pointer they counted? Next question. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, you're getting me in trouble. Okay. okay, well, thought I'd try. Anyway, just, um, but did when you guys, after all that happened, did you, did someone sort of take, like calm your guys down. I mean, you guys seem, I mean, you know, it was so such a frantic, you know, final five minutes. Who do you, well, who do you think was responsible for kind of leading you there? I mean, it, it was everybody, you know, everybody had their voice. Um, you know, I thought Darius, even though he wasn't playing, uh, Rajon was there. Um, you know, but I thought all the guys did a really good job of sticking together uh, and pulling together and just keeping calm. You know, even when we got down, um, you know, at the end of the game, nobody panicked. Um, and that play we found it at the end uh, and then came up with a stop and then obviously the opportunity to win the game. Thank you. Ashley. Ashley Bastock, Cleveland.com. JB, when you're talking about, you know, their ability to not panic despite, you know, having to bounce back from a call like that, how much of that has to do with this identity that you guys have worked to develop all season that you guys are so strong in that that it allows you to overcome some of those adverse moments that you maybe don't have control over uh, I mean it's it's a togetherness to be honest with you and we keep saying it um, but you know these guys is you know will to not disappoint one another um, you know they're going to try their best to figure out a way and you know, they went out and scrapped and clawed. You know, that play that Kevin made at the end of the game to come up with that rebound uh, and then get fouled was huge. Um, you know, so I, I think, you know, we follow his lead, you know, his presence, his calmness because of his experience. Uh, but then he goes out and performs and does the things we need to do to win basketball games. And I know we've asked you recently about Kevin from three, but just when he gets going the way he did in the second half for you guys tonight, just how much that alters the offenses and makes opposing defenses play honest and ultimately affects the outcome of games for you guys. Yeah. I mean, it creates a ton of space, um, but he's able to make difficult shots. Like those threes, he gets, you know, the majority of them highly contested. Um, and, you know, those are demoralizing to opponents as well. Uh, because they do contest. Um, but, you know, he takes a lot of pressure off a lot of people with his ability to make those shots. Joe G. Joe G. Kaz, I come. Uh, Coach, you've talked all year about, like, how good your big men are at passing. Uh, but, like, tonight you saw two huge scores of big man to big man passing. How good has that been all year? And then how about those two big buckets tonight, Jared, to uh, Mobley? I mean, you know, again, that we believe our bigs uh, are what make us unique and their ability um, to do, you know, most of the skilled things on the floor uh, gives us an opportunity to do different and unique things. Um, you know, their willingness to play together and share the game together uh, puts a ton of pressure on defenses and on interior defenses in particular. Um, you know, most teams don't throw seven footers out there, out there like we do, you know, and even we're down one. Um, so it's hard when one of them has the ball, you know, we have a size advantage somewhere else typically. Um, and we're still learning how to take advantage of that. You know, we're not there yet, uh, but our guys are reading the game uh, and looking for one another. And then after the Golden State game, uh, Jared Allen was really kind of vehement about like that he was never going to get beat on the offensive boards again. 11 of his 22 boards tonight on the offensive glass. How big were those tonight? I mean, they were huge. It, it, and, and this was, you know, Jarrett's message to his teammates, um, you know, that he was going to go out and he was going to impact the game. Um, we've talked about it time and again. Like, we followed Jarrett. Like, our guys will follow his effort and his heart. Um, and, you know, it's a different leadership style, uh, but he leads us that way. Thank you. Last one, Evan. 
Evan Dammer off Facebook News. JB, I think it was after the Portland game. You told me you were not, you guys were not playing a full 48 minutes of your style of basketball. And it's been a little shaky the last two games against New Orleans and uh, ever. And tonight, would you say you guys are kind of getting back to that form a little bit? It feels like you guys are playing your brand of basketball, doesn't it? Yeah, no, 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 no doubt. Um, you know, again, this is one of the best offensive teams in the league. And you hold them to 15 and 19 points in the second, third quarter. Um, you know, that's who we are. And, you know, in the first quarter, it took us a little bit just to kind of figure it out. Uh, but once we figured it out, I thought we did a great job of, you know, slowing the game down, bringing the game to the mud where we could really scrap, um, be physical and get our hands on people. And then there's one last quick one for me, just to kind of bounce off Joe's question about the your big man to big man uh, playmaking. Jarrett has been kind of making a high low game with Evan, kind of part of his repertoire. Is that something you guys have been encouraging, just at him as a playmaker a little bit? Yeah, I mean, again, what this league is going to come down to uh, typically is going to be matchups, and you're going to see a lot of switches. So you know, our strength on the switch is the interior. And so our big guys have to learn how to play together uh, to attack those switches and make teams pay.